All right, so this has gone slightly sort of viral in the exercise physiology, sports scientist world. But anyways, I think it's quite interesting and it's all about speed skating and also how this applies to cycling. So this is written by Nils Vanderpol, who won two gold medals in the Olympics this year. And it's all about skating, a 10K. Now a 10K seems to be about 20 minutes-ish. Uh, the world records I've, I've sort of got here in 1983. Well, it was 20 minutes. I think now it's probably a little bit quicker, more like 14, 15 minutes. Um, I think the current world record is 12 and a half minutes, actually by Niels van der Poel um, this year. So 12 minutes. So I guess similar sort of duration to some time trial efforts. I mean, obviously a bit shorter, uh, but, you know, generally like a quite an aerobic effort, but not crazy. Obviously, it's not a road race, but it's interesting to see how the boy trains. So this is his PDF that he's written if you want to win a 10K or a 5K on the long track. Um, so this is uh, him. So he's he came back to his speed skating. He was going to the gym. Um, and then I, it's not too interesting, this part, a lot of it is speed skating, general data. Um, so this is the most, the, what, the first thing that really, uh, is like stands out to me, which is the five, two training program. So he takes five days on two days off, very rogue. I'm not sure I could do that really. I think five days consecutively on is quite hard. And then to have two days off, like he says here, he gets quite bored and would find it really difficult. Um, but he would say that, that it was quite good psychological because it's more like having a job and not just having every day is sort of the same. Um, I guess, you know, it also depends what sort of efforts you're doing as well. But I guess, you know, he, it clearly works for him. I'm not sure if it would work for everyone. Um, but I think, it, yeah, he's, he did say it was good because he could live... Um, Live like a normal person. Then this is the next one, just how he's periodizing his training. So four different seasons. Uh, then he sort of has like an aerobic season, a threshold season specific, and then another sort of aerobic session, uh, an aerobic season. And that he would do the 5-2 training the whole time. Um, so he sort of eased into it. You can see his aerobic sessions, 33-hour weeks and the like, which we're going to get into. So the reason you I'm covering the speed skating is because he spends an in incredible amount of time riding a bike. Niels van der Poel, I think, must do more hours than a lot of people who are even pro on the road, um, despite his event being a lot shorter. But I think it goes to show that because he probably has less races in reality than other people, he can have a much larger base than most people. Um, so the 10 has me is partly an aerobic event. Um, so he obviously, that like for a lot of people, your anaerobic capacity is sort of quite limited genetically, while your aerobic capacity mo is like, seems to be more malleable mainly because you can just do more hours like if you think about the intensity you can't do crazy intensity really like there's a minimal there's a maximum amount so you can't the gains you can make off it are small while volume in theory i mean you've got all the time in the day obviously it's how much you can recover but you can go a lot so his target during the summer of 2021 so obviously that's like six months out from the olympics which is now so february 2022 so maybe a bit more than that um, he wanted to reach 33 hour weeks of cycling weekly. Now you might think that's a decent amount, but what you have to remember is he does that in five days. So it is actually a lot. He wants to do two, three, seven hour, seven, sorry, three, seven hour bike rides, two, six hour bike rides. Um, he normally says he runs, but he doesn't. But I think it's also interesting seeing that how he thinks cycling, which obviously has some crossover to speed skating, but isn't like exactly the same. But he thinks that obviously the mitochondrial adaption you're going to make it the same so it's an interesting thought if you want to go running maybe that actually cross training on cycling is quite useful um he said it's harder mentally than physically which i can imagine because you know why are you doing 30 hour training weeks on something that isn't your main sport i assume you must like cycling quite a lot um but he was also saying he, he does stupid endurance challenges well not maybe stupid but challenges so 100k runs a five-day running stage race or a 600 kilometer bike ride and i guess that's just for mental toughness obviously it has a, a good use of like endurance but it's also just to be like mentally uh tougher which i think is quite good he says the only time he's ever cried was um in his 100 mile run so anyway uh we'll see here so most of his aerobic rides were about 250 to 200 watts um so you can see when he started riding a bike properly in 2019 he was only doing 200 watts and so going up 50 watts obviously that's going to make more mitochondrial adaptions also you're just going to burn more calories as well so if that is an issue probably not for reference he's about 83 84 kilos it seemed to be uh, maybe a little bit lighter maybe a little bit heavier he ate about 7,000 calories a day, which doesn't actually seem enough, to be honest, because if he's doing 250 watts for seven hours, that alone is going to burn almost 7,000 calories. Um, so, well, not quite. It'll be like 6,000, I think. So it, that doesn't seem crazy amounts. Um, he didn't have great dental hygiene because the boy was eating so much sugar, which is fair enough. But this is an example week during the aerobic season. 
Oh, it's just crazy, like actually crazy. Seven, so, oh, sorry, I missed it. Um, seven hours on the bike on Monday, six hours on the bike, but like hard endurance. Like, okay, threshold, I would predict it would be well over 400, but even so, like it's quite high intensity um, for an aerobic ride. Like it's not a 40%, 50% of threshold. It's more like a 60 to 70% of threshold, um, which is still obviously zone two, but when you're doing that much volume, people generally like to reduce the uh, intensity just a little bit. And then he did, on Wednesday, he did two hours cross-country skiing and then four hours cycling. So you can see, like, every day he's doing six hours of endurance, which is crazy. But I guess it makes sense, you know, if you have the ability to do this much time and you can recover from it, then why not? Um, so he started this threshold season in August, so still a long way out from his competition phase, really. Like, um, I guess it goes to show that his aerobic phase was sort of, like, in the summer um, of 2021 so i guess it's maybe only a couple months really he did it it's it's hard to say exactly how long he had his aerobic season for um but anyway his threshold season is i in my opinion more impressive so it lasted about approximately 10 weeks actually let's see how long the aerobic aerobic session um he didn't really say how long it was to be honest he said during the summer so maybe just you know maybe he started in may or something uh and then continued on in August, which I guess is still, as I said, quite far out. He started to do a threshold, which is 10, 10 weeks long. Um, he just wants steady transitions. Uh, he started with six by eight and then moved on to four by 30, six by 15, which makes sense, you know, classic progressive overload. Um, he tried to do more uh, more than eight hours, eight hours a week a few times, but it backfired. So that's eight hours of threshold, which is absolutely bonkers. Again, um, if you've ever done any cycling, even an hour of threshold in a session is pretty grim. Uh, but we'll see here. So he says, like, on Monday, he does 4 by 30 at 400 watts. Uh, on Tuesday, he says 5 by 20 at 400 watts. So I think these is probably, like, threshold in terms of the classical, like, zone 1 is below your, like, lactate, like, LT1, like, below really easy. Zone 2 is in between the two lactate points. Zone 3 is over it. So I think when he says threshold, these are probably more, like, sub-threshold in terms of, like, FTP for cyclists, when people say like, the, the like what is your FTP or MLSS as people call it. But anyway, basically this is like, you know, in between, you know, is threshold, but it's not like FTP exactly. Um, so it's more probably like sweet spot. If you're a cyclist, this is probably the intensity he's doing because I don't think you'd be able to repeat this every day. I may be wrong, but that is roughly what I'm thinking. So threshold, he was going 394, 20. Um, if my power dropped more than 3% from what it normally is, I can consider a boarding session taking two days of rest. Um, so basically, he's pretty consistent. He also lowered the intensity on his aerobic rides to approximately 220, which makes sense. You just accumulate slightly less lactate. Obviously, on a zone two ride, you don't accumulate much lactate, but it's even better if you do it slightly lower. Um, so 4 by 30 at 400 with only five minutes rest. So that's almost a two-hour block because five minutes, you're not recovering much. 5 by 20 at 400, again, four-minute rest. 6 by 15, I mean, every single day of doing, you know, an hour and a half of threshold minimum um, is, is pretty rough. I'm not, really, I'm not sure I could do this uh, at all. Maybe in the summer I should go, re, uh, when I actually have more time after my exams finish, maybe I should go for a five-day a five day block like this, but obviously with my numbers, not, not his. But still, I think that would be absolutely crazy. And I'm not sure how many people will be able to get through it. But we, we keep going. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the... So you can see a uh, specific season was also losing weight season. So he went from 85 to 80. So again, like pretty decent numbers. Like five watts per kilo um, is, is pretty strong. Um, you can see he still was doing uh, cycling and running, um, but he was more doing, uh, I guess, he was still doing like three by 30 at 400 watts. Um, but then he'd also do like 10K sessions on his, um, on his skates, uh, which, you know, I'm not going to get into too much, but this would be an example session. So you do two and a half biking, hours biking, um, but more of the 10k specific things then it's interesting to see how he tapers as well um obviously like you know the tapering was usually six to 12 days which is uh probably what most people do about a week it obviously depends how much you're doing um and then he also says that he changed to a 12 day period so for his aerobic taper what he'd do is like have a big rest which makes sense so this is the 12 day so this is his race here um i assume as the oh no that that's the only race so he has three days of rest to really like I guess, remove all the fatigue. Then he starts to do a bit of training again, then has more rest, but you can see it's not as crazy. It's like two and a half, it's still decent here. Um, but I guess an extra day of rest means he's sort of going into that okay, another rest. And then like these 5K sessions, so he's doing less volume than he was doing in a specific phase and also doing less hours on the bike, which is basically how you tape it. You just do less. And then we're gonna go look back at his aerobic season. So this was 
after the first World Cup in December. So really sort of where you wouldn't necessarily think he's going to be doing aerobic training. Um, but yeah, he started doing, again, just more six hour bike rides, which he seems to enjoy quite a lot. Um, I guess maybe he thinks that, you know, he doesn't want to overdo the intensity too early on. Um, and he says here, by inhibiting the high intensity training for a couple of weeks, instead of investing more aerobic hours, the hormones settle to more sat- salutary levels and the danger of overtraining after a super compensation is avoided. Because obviously he was doing crazy amounts, so his body's adapting a lot. But if you do that for a long time, it's easy to uh, easy to burn out or easy just when your body not to to take it. So anyway, this is all scale stuff. So we, we're not probably going to go too much into it. Um, then he has some testing as well. Um, but anyway, that's basically what I really wanted to cover was just his training because I thought it was really interesting to see how he trains five days on, two days off. I probably can read more about it. I haven't read too much of this. I've basically just read the first part. But it's amazing to see how much intensity he's doing um, in like a five-day block uh, and also just how strong these guys are who don't even ride a bike full-time. Um, I mean, it seems like they do, but obviously speed skating is his main discipline, but still super, super strong. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed this little video. Something different, but I thought it was uh, definitely something interesting to uh, to bring out to you guys. See you in a bit.